Our microphones didn't capture the first question of the session, but it was a great question that allowed Mr. Durant to talk about a different and an effective new way to talk with the world about freedom and liberty. The new centurion who asked the question wanted to know what Clark would say to a friend of his who believes that all of the elements of socialism and communism already exist here in America. That the New Deal gave a socialized retirement, the Great Society entrenched people in the dependency class. And today, the large percentage of Americans who call for socialized medicine, for more centralization, shows that the march towards communism is already well underway here in America. How would you respond to her? Well, I would say a couple of different things. So long as uh, the world exists, the elements that lead one uh, to be tempted by evil things will always be present. So in one sense, she's right. In one sense, the mere fact that um, the temptation to power, uh, which is so great on both the Republican and Democratic side, uh, is not the freedom of which our founders spoke, uh, nor is it the, the tremendous freedom that God asks of people to exist within, the responsible freedom that God asks us to exist within. So I would say that um, as we certainly don't have, uh, I mean, there still is, a, by the way, a Communist Party in the U.S., US uh, but you don't have it in the same way that you have in the Soviet Union. But interestingly enough, when you look at the ideological and philosophic debates that are going on in the world right now, uh, I would say rather than rather than juxtapose freedom and lack of freedom, I would say let us look at love and let us look at hate. Let us look at these differences because in in in, in love there is perfect liberty. In freedom there is there is ultimately at the very root of freedom is calling us to a deeper love. And rather than try, I would try to find ways to take the conversation outside the traditional political language. There's no question of public policy things that you have to talk about, there's less taxes, less spending, less government, more freedom, whatever it may be. But I think each of you is called to be a leader in a different way and to begin to develop a different compelling vision of what a free society really looks like. And I think if we engage in that process, in that conversation, I think it will begin to take shape that is not what we might think. When Russell does talk about prudence, the reason that he does is because he recognizes the recklessness with which human beings can act. And prudence requires a tremendous self-discipline, a tremendous discipline of self. The whole reason the Greeks talked of these different virtues was they recognized that the greatest enemy of freedom is the human person. In the same way, the human person is the very vessel that God would bring love into the world. And I think so. In, in one sense, I would say to her, join me in a conversation that will bring the ability of people to live fully to their purpose is created in the image and likeness of God. Well, we won't depend on force to get things done, force or faith, but we will really look to how people will respond if you call them to the highest sense of who they are rather than appealing to their lowest sense. And begin a conversation with her like that, rooted in the idea of what freedom can be. And it would be very interesting how it will begin to shape our communities, and I think in a very different way in a very different way. But I think each of you is called to be a leader in a different way and to begin to develop a different, compelling vision of what a free society really looks like.